Hello all and welcome back to High Ridge Farm with me, the Walrus. We're partway through the summer season, we're here, and we have had the torrential green rains have come down and been and gone now, thankfully, leaving the valley unaffected, other than some residual moss. Ooh, what's this sign? Hello, I've not seen this before. Trout Derby, this weekend, summer 21st, 20th and 21st. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to be doing some intense levels of fishing this weekend. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if I'm going to need to cook a bunch of recipes that might assist me with my fishing skill. Because if I can be cheeky and have a higher fishing skill, that's going to kind of help me out, I believe. We will see, however, because it might be something that I can easily organize and sort out. For now, I'm just going to very quickly nip back to the house because I've forgotten to grab something. Which is, as we've always seen, a general rule of thumb for me to forget to organise stuff. Now, I've been trying to cook through some of the smoked fish here as I've got a large number of fish that need to be smoked through. And I'm still very much keen on trying to obtain more coal. I still want a good stack of 999, as I do need, well, I say need, I want to get that piano, and the trouble is, I need all of the coal for it. Now, of course, that is going to involve me doing a lot more mining, or burning wood into charcoal, because actually, well, I say charcoal, it's still coal, but near enough the same idea. But I do have a lot of wood. Now, what I'm going to do here is, as you can see, I'm failing at it. There we go. I wanted to look and see the moss. See, I thought it was only four moss. Apparently, you need ten pieces of moss to turn into a soup, which does seem quite outrageous, if you ask me, when it comes to level uh, amounts of food that, well, food products that you need to turn into food. I don't think there's anything else that requires that sort of degree. I think really, uh, like the, the most unhinged, I say unhinged, is probably the carp surprise being that you need four carp for it. So that's the closest one that I can honestly think of of a similar level. All the same, I've grabbed all, my, all of that extra there and we're going to go from here onwards. Onwards and upwards we go. Well, I've made the soup. I don't know whether it's going to be worth to drink or to actually consume. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's very much a maybe. Who knows? For now, though, we're going to quickly go and grab ourselves this um, very important and very useful spice berry. I say very useful and very important. Really, honestly, it's kind of a... It's being grabbed purely for the sake of it's something I can turn into a jam or preserve or something. I'm sure it's not really the end of the world. But Clint, I would like you to smack open these chests for me, like these present type things. Mr. Key has given us many shiny things. and Let's see what else we can get out of them. So nothing super exciting out of that one, unfortunately, but hey, we've got it and that's really all we can say. Don't know what else really I can do with it. I mean, it'd be nice if I had um, something a bit more useful out of it, but I don't think there is. As daft as that might very well sound. Oh well, it's not the end of the world. Okay, now the the hoppers are something that I've been using a lot of since I started thinking about them, which I know might sound a bit, bit, bit particularly bizarre, but there are lots of things within Stardew Valley that I know I've not been using as much. Um, as much as I really should be. For example, as was quite rightly pointed out by one of the view my viewers, was that I'm not really using the bait maker um, for making like the customized baits and such. And in honesty, I don't know why. Other than the fact that I am a scatterbrained fool and I'm likely, to, and generally will do, forget that it even exists. But anyway, while we're here on Ginger Island, we can see that the powder melons are nearly ready. So that's one of the new winter crops. And I thought it might be a good idea to start growing them whilst we're here over on Ginger Island. Because we can. I mean, there's no other real way of describing it otherwise than we can do it. We might as well. But we're going to go and visit Mr. Key very quickly because I think that would be a good idea. 
And I'm curious to see if Mr. Key can offer us a quest that I've not actually tried to do before. I mean, there are a number of them that I haven't really attempted. I mean, I did manage to actually finally achieve the floor 100 um, on hard mode, and that wasn't too bad. I think I've tried, I've done the floor 100 without eating um, stuff. But the, I think the biggest thing really has been for the Mr. Key quests is just trying to get as many of the key gems. The one that I know I'm nowhere near going to have much luck on is the Junimo cart high score because it just makes me hurt. That's very sweet of Leo. I Genuinely, of all the characters, of the young characters, I do have a soft spot for Leo. I think that his character is very much adorable and wanting to try and live his life as well as he can, even though he knows that he's had quite a struggle. And, and he must be aware of that because, well, he, his entire recent life has been on this island because his parents, well, disappeared, which is awful. But it's lovely the way that he and um, Linus work together really nicely. And it's, it's a lovely pairing and I, I very much like it. Now, one of the other things I'm having a quick look through is for the, what's it called? The things that need moss, because I know there's a few things that need moss, and I was just trying to figure out what they were. Because, of course, I had to put a fair bit of effort into actually getting it. Well, I grabbed as much of it as possible during the weird um, rainstorm that was earlier. So it kind of made sense to do so. There it is. The Statue of Blessings. 333! And they need 999 fibre. Goodness gracious, that's an absurd amount. Okay, I don't think I have 999 fibre. I am going to have to put some work in to actually get that. Otherwise, I'm a bit stuck. That's annoying. Not the end of the world, just annoying. Well, it looks like I'm going to be scything through some more stuff and getting what we can. Mixed seeds is going to be helpful anyway because, I mean, it's just a useful resource to have lots of. And I'm actually kind of keen to get a lot more of them because we've only got another week and a half before we're rolling into the autumn or fall season. Which, that's going to mean that I'm going to need more uh, resources available um, for slapping into the ground and putting more mixed seeds away. Kind of a given. Right, well, let's just quickly shake this tree and see what we can get from it. So the, the coconuts themselves are going to be quite useful. I'm not needing wood so much now. It's I've got plenty of it. I think I must have a good three or 4,000 just stocked up. So I'm not worried about wood. It is really I'm after the things from the trees, like the coconuts, which, of course, are only available from the palm trees. Um, I was just trying to think, because it'd be nice if you were able to plant palm trees and just get an irregular harvest of coconuts. But I guess considering they are, they're frequent enough that you don't have to worry about them. And the places that you do see them, they do constantly produce. So it's not really as much of a concern. One of the other things I was actually debating recently was because... I've been snacking and pretending to be healthy. Um, so I've been snacking on cucumbers a lot. Um, I've been quite fortunate the local supermarket has baby cucumbers available in a packet of them. You get eight of them in a, in a little pack. And after washing them, I've just been snacking on them. And I was thinking, you know what would be really nice? Cucumbers. Because that's something that I, I... It might be a very, very British stereotype sort of thing, but... It's something that we will put into the um, a greenhouse. So having cucumbers in the greenhouse, it, it makes sense to me. I'd, I'd quite like to see that. But we'll see. Because, hey, I've, as mentioned before, I'm trying to avoid using mods other than the texture ones that I've been using. And I might try to just avoid using mods in general until I've played through everything within year four. But we've got lots of melon jelly. That's lovely and such. We've got lots of just general jellies and preserves that we need to grab and use. It's not the end of the world. Super easy in the grand scheme of things. But we do have a lot of them. 
It's going to give us a, a fair old crack of extra money. And again, the money isn't the thing that I need to be concerned about. But one of the things that I am happy about is the pickled radishes. Because pickled radish is one of the things that raccoons have asked for recently. So we're going to go and hand over some pickled radishes to the raccoons. And I think the other thing they wanted was tomato juice. And I remember joking about the fact that my father um, is quite partial to tomato juice. It's just... I still can't get my head around it. Not like, you know, I find it difficult to understand the concept of it. It's just, I just, it doesn't do my, it doesn't mesh with my taste buds. And it's like, mm, not my jam. And I think that's a, a kind of a frustrating thing because every now and again, I will try something and I'll find that, oh, actually, I'm quite partial to it. Or, oh, I can deal with this. Like, for example, whiskey was something I never really drank much. And have recently started getting into it in the last um last year or so actually another one that's also quite good is i'd highly recommend it if you are a fan of whiskies and even gins dutch yeneva that stuff very interesting i have some peated yeneva it's a type of gin that is peated like whiskey it's very bizarre and it's aged like whiskey fantastic stuff but anyway, uh, less alcohol aside. So we were handing over the radishes to our lovely raccoon friends. And then we've just got to do their um, tomatoes. Well, the tomato juice, at least. So I don't think that's going to be super difficult, I don't think. It's still somewhat annoying, but I know I've got some already on the go. Like, we've already started that process going. So I'm not super concerned about that. Okay, so Statue of Blessings, I still need more fibre. Maybe I should make some of the fibre um, plants. Because I think they give you, like, a reasonable amount every time you harvest them. And so I just need some more mixed seeds. So conveniently, I did actually get some more recently, but I do need more of them. And once I've grabbed them from my generic chest here, that'll allow me to, well, grab what I need. That'll be good. And we'll make some fiber seeds. Let's make let's make a hundred. I mean, I've got the capability of doing so, and it might seem a little overkill, but it might be something that I might end up planting over the winter, um, because it, I think it can grow in all seasons. I think it actually describes it can grow in all seasons, but it'll allow me to gather more. It'll give me something to do other than well, powder melons actually, which again I'm quite pleased about as a new crop. I'm probably going to, once the powder melons are being harvested from ginger island, I might turn them into wine, I'll turn them into preserves. I'm just curious to see what its um, cell value is. Not just because it's a useful crop during winter, it means I can actually plant something. So I'll be able to plant forage, well, forage, sorry, the, um, I'll be able to plant um, fibre. I'll be able to plant powder melon, and I'll be able to plant the mixed seeds. So, you know, it's all useful stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. For now, however, let's have a quick look and see what else we can sort out that's available today. Well, I'm going to speed grow the fibre plants. It makes sense to me to increase their speed of growth. Yes, they're not in an area which is going to get watered, and I know I could slap down some sprinklers i think i probably should but i don't think that area is going to be a constant area of growth it doesn't seem to like mesh well with my idea in that area but all the same it is very useful where it is okay well heading to bed we're now into day 18 so we're on to thursday and let's see what other things we can find. So a male slime has hatched. I do need to remember to go and check the slime hutch. It's somewhere that I always forget about as well. I, I think it's, again, it's not something that comes to mind a lot of the time. So it means that I end up essentially neglecting my slimes, which is not good. Because one does not wish to neglect one's pets. Even though I wouldn't really consider the slimes a pet. But all the same, I don't really want to neglect them. Um, yeah. Probably should um, make a slightly better attempt for that. 
But for now, we're going to make some more coffee. Now, this is going to be a big thing for me because of the Mr. Key quest that I have taken, being that I want fresh produce. Um, and I've not really ever done this one before. Like, I've done the key fruit. That one's a given. Like, of course I've give, done the key fruit one. But I've not tried this one out before. So it could be interesting to see how it, this one works. Oh my goodness, look at all of that jade. Well, now I know I've got lots of the... Um, what's it called? I do have lots of the staircases now. Which, because of the... Again, a very helpful for you of pointing out that I could be sensible and uh, use jade as an exchange, which is very sensible and, and the most logical way of doing things. But again, I'm not very clever. But it meant that I was able to get it, and that was good. And um, what's next, on the other hand, though, is I've got lots of it, and I think I might lower the production quantities of it because I can only redeem it once a week. I've got almost a stack of 999 staircases and I don't think I need really, really much more than that. But I will hold on to what I've got for now. Okay. I'm also debating just getting rid of the crab pots there because do I really need them? I don't think I do. I mean, they're good and all, but the, they're just getting turned into sushi or flung in the um, sail bin. So I don't really need to worry about them, do I? Now, the beehives. That's another thing I'm also considering, because I'm wondering if I could build a bunch of beehives, put them on Ginger Island. Oh, that might be a good idea. Because, of course, those are these smaller patches of land that are just outside of the farm but they're available per se I wonder if I could then use those with the grass that's nearby so build the beehives put them on grass plant a flower or two on in that area the one that I want to get the specific type of honey which I think blue jazz is one that sells quite well as does fairy rose honey and that way, I could have a lot of beehives and end up with something really exciting. I say exciting, it's beehives, but I find beehives exciting. That's going to be... That should be something I'll try next week. I'm going to try and see... Well, I mean, I need to have a look and see what do I actually need to build more hives. But for now, we've got a lot of other stuff to work through, which is going to be dealing with all of this... Well, all the crops that are ready today. And, I mean, the red cabbage will be soon. That's good. Never too upset about red cabbage, because red cabbage is great. It's an easy one to use. And just... I mean, I would quite like to have some coleslaw myself, actually. But considering I've been reading through the, the new cookbook um, for a Stargy Valley, I have seen a few recipes that I am very keen to try. And um, I've made coleslaw before, but it is something I would like to quite, I would quite like to do, because I think it'll be fun. It's a small thing, but small things, small minds. <laughs> and I, it's something I'm painfully aware of anyway. But we've got lots of pineapple jelly. That's fine. Um, let's quickly put all of these through into preserve. That's good. What other things can we sort out here? Um, well, the summer squash, it's one of those ones that's not really super silly valuable. It's good, especially since that it's a constant producer. And maybe that's something I would, would be quite, it might be quite nice for me to do, is a couple of shorts where I just go over the, the constant producing crops and their values and such. That might be a good idea. I mean, that'd be quite fun. I think I'll, I might try and record that later on. Because the thing is with the YouTube short stuff, I've got some ideas whether they're good ones. Very different question. Right. Let's see what else we can do. Um, well, we, we're still only at 10.50, so we've still got plenty of time today. I mean, we got up quite early. I say quite early. 
Usually I spend like a good hour just dossing around inside the house when I've woken up in game. Which, considering what I do in real life, yeah, that seems about right. So all of that star fruit's ready for harvest. Okay, so that's gonna not cause problems, but that is going to be a pain in the posterior. Because that's gonna need dealing with. Hmm. Now how am I gonna do that? Okay, so I'm gonna have to work out what other things I'd like to harvest. So that's all the star fruit. That's fine. But that's still a lot to do. I mean, look at that. We're like 320, so about 350 star fruit, which is, I think, a reasonably competitive amount. Um, I think some of the star fruit I'm going to replace with other crops. And I think that's. It feels like a reasonable suggestion, shall we say, um, of things to do to replace some of the um, them with like these grapes. Now I'm aware that one cannot walk through the grape starters because, of course, they're vines. But my theory here is because I've got the scythe, I should operative on the word should be able to harvest over them and I want to have quite a few because of course they are used to make raisins which are quite helpful as they can be used to improve the capabilities of the Junoids. I still haven't quite figured out how it actually improves them and what the, the improvement is but from there's a little sign outside saying that they've got something going on, so <laughs> who knows. I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. But that's um, that's something I'm going to need to have a look at. Okay, Mr. Key, yes. So he wants 100,000, sorry, of cooked, fresh cooked items. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, it's not saying it's a super difficult, I don't think, but I've never done that one. This is why I'm trying to do it. Now, I can see that I haven't actually shipped out some of the items on the farm, so I may need to just quickly alter that and make sure that I'm re-back at my perfection level. I don't think I've actually shipped out a couple of other items. Let's have a quick look. So it looks like I haven't shipped out the larva, like the red, the lava jelly. That's easy. I think I've got some of that lying around. Um, what other stuff have I not shipped out? Oh, I haven't shipped out moss. Well, that's, again, that's quite easy. What are the other ones? I mean, that must be broccoli and powder melon, but what's that? I wish I had even the foggiest idea what it might have been. Hmm. I am going to have to try and investigate. Because, of course, I'm not using my... Not using wiki, I'm not using any other sort of figuring out bits. I've got to try and figure it out myself. Which isn't the end of the world, it's just going to take me some time. Which I can deal with. It's fine. Okay. Well, let's deposit all of the fruit and veg and crops and stuff. That's easy enough to do, isn't it? There we go. So 63 star fruit going out to, our, to be vended by our collection of... Our mayor. And that's one of the things I forget is the fact that it is Lewis who is coming by and collecting the stuff that you put in the shipping bin. So when it comes to going, oh, I'm just going to ship out, I don't know, 3,000 stone because I've just got too much. I almost feel bad for him. Almost. And then I remember he being a bit of a butt face when it comes to Marnie. Because I think everybody knows. It's such a small village. There's no way that, like, somebody doesn't know at this point. Right, so we've now made the Statue of Blessings. Now, my plan for this one is to place it down outside the front of the house. I think next to my Junimo chest. Because I have to walk out the house every day. So, I mean, that makes sense, right? As a place to go. So, yeah, we're going to put it there. And, uh... Kind of hope for the best. Because, of course, I want uh, a greater number of shiny things. 
And the blessings are kind of cool. Like, the fact that currently I'm getting an improved uh, level of friendship with people, which, I mean, yes, that's not that helpful to me now. But I guess... I mean, it's the sort of thing that maybe could be useful if you were still early? The thing is, it's quite complicated to make, so I'm not sure when you'd use it, other than the fact that there is a slight friendship degradation. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going to have to have a think. There's got to be some, like, vaguely clever way that one uses it, or that it has some benefit. Maybe. I'm not sure. I'm going to stop rambling. But I am buying a big bucket ton of starfruit seeds. I mean, a good thousand is, I think, a good idea at this point, because I'm going to need it. I mean, it's always the way, isn't it? I, I use a lot of starfruit. It's a given um, that I'm going to use lots of starfruit, because that's just how I, I work with both my farms, especially during the summer. And that's fine. Okay. Lovely. So we've got our thousand star fruit, which is lovely and all. And what next can we do? Well, we're obviously going to head back to Ginger Island to slap some more plants down. That's, I think, a given. Um, and shouldn't be too much of a concern or a problem, really. Um, that's going to be easy enough to sort out. But the question really comes, what else am I going to plant here? I'm waiting to get more broccoli because broccoli is one of those items, it's one of the crops, the newer ones, and I like the idea of having more constantly harvestable. Um, I would like to plant more powder melons down, I think that would be quite nice and pleasant, I think. Um, it's just a bit of a umming and ahhing at this point, of like, what else would work? What would be a good idea? What might be nice? But hundreds of star fruit because I'm going to plant down about 300 of the stuff. I mean, yes, okay, I've taken up some extra space by growing grapes, but that's not a bad thing, I don't think. Because grapes themselves are, I mean, they're going to give me a lot of money going forward, I feel. I mean, I can't see any reason they wouldn't give me a lot of money going forward, but hey, grapes, that's how it goes. Right. Uh, well, there we go. We've slapped everything down now, which is good. Um, the question is, what next? And how are we going to sort it out either way? Hmm. Well, the other thing I've also got to look at here is I don't really, honestly, need much in the way of sap still. Because I've got all these hardwood trees that were planted and such and are generating large quantities of sap and I'm wondering if there comes a point where I can actually just cut them down and maybe I should turn that area above the top part of the farm into the apiary or I could do something else I'm not sure yet I do need to have a think but I am going to make some more magic bait because I've got a task and that task is to try and catch um some ridiculous fish. Um, some rad snappers. And I have a real sneaking suspicion they can only be caught when it's raining. There's a few fish that just, I'm like, yeah, like the legend. Like I'm going, yeah, I think you can only catch it when it's chucking it down with rain, which is kind of annoying. And there's not much else I can sort of say or do on that front. I've got no no other way around, like, trying to sort that out. I can't help it. It's just going to be how it is. But I'm pretty sure that's one of them. It does mean, though, that I'm going to be catching on all sorts of different fish. And maybe that's another thing that I should look at um, ready for going forward for the next uh, few days. Because we've got that um, fishing derby that's coming up very shortly in a couple of days time and i wonder what other things are going to be good and also trout i mean there's the rainbow trout is that the only trout i think it is i'm not sure i'll have to double check 
But I'm, I'm quite pleased that I've caught all of the fish now, so I don't have to worry as much. But I do have them all, and they're all ready. Kind of ready to go. But let's see what other things we can get, if we can get anything. Oh, oh I didn't get the golden box, but I did get a perfect red mullet. I mean, it's red, but it's not the fish I want. I want snappers. Come on, snappers. Why are you being so finicky? Surely they must be in here somewhere. I mean, this one seems a little bit more vigorous. I can't remember how aggressively difficult it is to catch us now. Okay, that was a squid. Well, that means so I can make some calamari. That is something that I am a, a good sucker for, because... It's a food item that I've never tried cooking. I don't know about everyone else out here. But there are a few food items that I very much enjoy. But I haven't plumbed up enough courage to try to cook myself. Because I fear that I will mess it up. Because they are kind of an item that... Like, they're a food that I know requires some skill to actually cook well. And unfortunately, I'm fearful that I will cook it badly. Which, not the greatest of, you know, logics, but it is a thing I am painfully aware of that I think I'm not very good at cooking, um, specifically within uh, trying to cook um, squid. But again, I've never tried cooking octopus, and I think that maybe mollusks in general are one that I've never tried because I've not summed up enough courage to. I think it's because I don't want to ruin it. But for now, I'm quite content to eat it cooked for me by somebody more professional than I. But oh well. Right, so we can see that it's... I mean, it's slowly slugging away through the day. That we're we are burning a lot of time though at the moment. Um, what with how many um, fish we're trying to catch here, I wonder if I should hold on to them and slap them in to be smoked. That's another question. I wonder if smoked fish counts as food items that are cooked. I mean, they kind of are, ish. But I wonder. I wager they probably don't count for the Mr. Key um, challenge requirement quest that is set for me at the moment. Not the end of the world if that's not the case, but it'd be kind of nice if it was. An albacore. Yeah, again, we're still getting quite a lot of useful fish. I mean, yes, okay, not all of it's going to be actually useful, useful. But it's still nice. We can sell it, we can make some money out of it. And I think that's something that, um, considering I, I don't say that, I, I wouldn't say that I find the fishing in Stardew particularly difficult. But I have friends who have stated to me that they find it fiendishly complicated and annoying and they don't like doing it. Which is very fair because not everybody's able to do different, every aspect of every game. In the same way that I'm terrible at Junimo Kart. And if I had a friend who was really good at Junimo Kart, I would shamelessly get them to play it for me um, and then watch as I cry about how the fact that I'm really bad at it. <laughs> Which I think is perfectly reasonable. I mean, heck, I was used like that for certain aspects of video games growing up with my ki kid brother. I say kid brother, he's only two years younger than I am. But when he was, um, when he and I were young, there were some times um, that we'd get very confused and lost in games. I remember playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and somehow I managed to figure out the water temple. Now, I'm not saying it's entirely a time before wiki guides uh, and such, but going online to find the, a walkthrough for it wasn't exactly something that was very... Um, common or easy to do so that was fine okay so let's dump something what we're we gonna dump uh, eeny meeny money oh i don't know that yeah so i should probably read those two books though let's read this one and read this one that's fine hopefully we can get something good out of it okay we've learned some new things about fishing well 
I'm not too concerned because I'm already aware that my fishing skill is already maxed and I've already obtained mastery, so I'm pretty much sorted regardless, but still all the same. Frustrating. Ugh. Hopefully I get something good out of this. Come on. You can see I'm still still desperately trying to catch more fish. Which again, not a terrible thing to want to do. But I've still not had much joy with catching these damn snappers. I've caught a couple of them. But I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve it. Especially considering we're getting up quite late in the day. And part of me is just getting bored of fishing. I think that's kind of the issue. But I will say as well, when it comes to using... Ooh, that's actually useful. Some sea jelly. I do need more of that. Because that way I can make more smokers. Because I made four. And I think that's a decent amount. I'd like more, of course. When wouldn't I want more? That'll be good. Because smokers are excellent ways of extra in increasing the value of your fish. And that is never a bad thing. In one's own humble opinion. Come on. Well, apparently today is the day of fishing and we've got lots of fish to ca try and catch. But it's still not perplexing really. It's just being very frustrating more than anything, isn't it? Oh, well, we can try and get that golden chest this time. It's still good, I guess. It's something extra. And I'd rather have that anyway. What do we got? Uh, sardine. That's fine and all. And we've got ourselves another fish scanner. Well, I'm going to put both the fish scanners on at the moment. It's not really... It, they don't stack. Because it'd be weird to know twice what you're going to catch. But when it comes to the fact that one can double stack the, the different... Um the different lures, it is quite interesting the sorts of effects that you can generate based upon that. Now that magnets themselves are no longer a lure, they're actually a bait item, which I kind of think it works better as a bait. As it's, um... It just fits better, I feel. Again, that's in one's own opinion. But it feels like it fits better. As an item goes. So, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to fling them all in. I can't be bothered to hold on to them <laughs> and smoke them all. That's that's going to involve effort and time. And I can't be bothered. Right. Let's see what else we can sort out while we've got organising everything. So, looks like the fishing kind of petered out a bit. It's not like we caught as much as I was hoping. But I am going to cook a couple of things, I think. Um, I say a couple. I'm going to cook a stack of coffee. Now, I do have all of that coffee just sitting in my shed. So I could make silly value. Oh, okay, so it won't tell me until the next day. Fine. So fish triples. I'm glad that it's separate from my regular one. Okay, so... I'm going to make more of that, and I think organising how I'm going to do that is probably my best plan. I think coffee's going to be my selling thing to do. I might make a few bits of maki and other such with um, with some of the, the very low end fish that I keep that I get every day, so the crayfish and all. Um, but I think that's a, as good as I'm going to really get for this right now. Which I think is fine. Okay, so that's all hunky-dory. Let's put all this away. But we are pretty much starting to get ready for the end of the night. It's been a... It's been a day. <laughs> that's probably the nicest way of putting it. We've had lots of weird and wonderful and, unfortunately, spent far too long fishing. Which is going to actually be the trend for the next video. What with it being the Trout Derby. So, I'm curious to see what the Trout Derby will hold. And what that's actually going to entail. So this could be an interesting time. Hopefully it's uh, an interesting of turn of events. And actually has something curious and a, an interesting and good reward. We'll have to wait and see because 
got no other choice on that one, have we? But I'm going to prepare and get ready to log on off now. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed, please do like, share and subscribe because I always do try to respond to every comment that comes through. And it's always lovely to see the new subscribers. Uh, share it with your friends if you want to see them enjoy me doing weird rambly stuff with a very British accent about and playing Stardew. I am intending uh, on doing some more streaming. It's going to be happening every two weeks. So it's the 16th of June is going to be the next one. And that's going to be hopefully tomorrow for this video because this one will be should be going live on the 15th. So we'll see. And uh, we'll see what I end up playing. But again, big shout out. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon. And those of you who are in my naming rights tier who get animals named after them at the moment. That's the only tier we've got presently, but I'm still trying to figure out other higher tiers for more silly things. And perhaps it'll be me recording things specifically for you. But hopefully I will catch you all again the next time the walrus plays Stardew Valley.